The Root and Report podcast is brought to you by the Westport Library. Welcome to the Rudin Report podcast. I'm Dave Rudin. We're coming off what was a tremendous week of boys lacrosse. There's always a tremendous week of boys lacrosse. Lacrosse is the best played sport in the FCAC, but this was the first week we started looking at uh, the Power Five and getting a chance to play each other. And we went from what we thought might happen to having a little bit better read on how we're going to rank the top teams. Obviously, that could change because they're each going to be playing each other pretty much twice during the regular season. And then uh, we'll see how much during the playoffs. But we're going to talk boys lacrosse. I have a good interview I recorded yesterday with Ridgefield coach Roy Colsey. And joining me again from the Westport Library studio here is my good friend Ian Nicholas. Ian, how you doing today? Doing really well, Dave. Happy to be back after um, being at home last week and much better sound quality this time around because, you know, we have some of the best in the business here working it. It's a great day outside, a great day to talk about some lacrosse. And as you mentioned, the five teams we're going to talk about, they really are all very talented and they can all make a deep push. But as you mentioned, I think we know who's going to be number one. Yeah, you know, after getting a chance this past week, I saw Darian, I saw New Canaan, I saw Ridgefield, saw Darian play and beat them both. And uh, the road to FCAC and state titles is going through Darian. Right now, they proved they beat Ridgefield, beat New Canaan by a combined uh, 16 goals. So uh, neither of the games were particularly close. Basically, Darian just started pulling away, especially the second half against Ridgefield. But it was interesting because a player on another team uh, saw my Instagram story and that we had videos and messaged me. And he said, what does Darian look like? And I said, I think they look like if you're watching a movie, but you're watching it in fast forward. They just seem faster than everybody else. I think they have... More outstanding players. There are a lot of outstanding players in the league. I think they have more of them at more positions, which means Coach Jeff Braymeyer, uh, in terms of strategy and, and mixing and matching personnel, he's got a little bit of an advantage there. And uh, Ian, I don't know, I was at the New Canaan game Saturday. Were, were you there? I actually wasn't. I was on my way back from Syracuse. I was a little bit gassed up and uh, watched the game from home on DAF Media. And uh, let's just say I'm excited to cover the next game because I hope it's a little more competitive than the one that was on Saturday. You're right, Dave. Darianne is just an unbelievable team. It's the talent, but also the phenomenal coach and Coach Braymeyer. It's a perfect combination this year. And really, they have great senior leadership. They have a lot of guys who are well-known names around the FCA, but they also have one of the Picornies, the youngest Picorni, who's one of their best players too, and he's a freshman. Yeah. So from top to bottom, they're faster, they're more experienced, and in a year where few teams were really ready to take the uh, the experience leap with a lot of younger guys having to be forced into bigger roles. Darian not only returns experience, but their underclassmen do not look like underclassmen. They look like players who are ready to compete, score goals, play tight defense. Their face-off man uh, is phenomenal, and he's bigger than any face-off man in the FCAC and Ty Kaminsky. Ty Kaminsky's just, uh, he's, he set the tone in, in both games, really dominated against Ridgefield, and and as you'll hear in my interview, the, the one big concern for the Tigers thus far is, has been draws, and, and they're going to have to figure that out. But Ty Comiskey, uh, the new Canaan game, uh, Darianne was up 3 nothing before he even blinked. It was basically like, okay, let's give Darianne a 3 nothing lead, and let's see how we go from there. And uh, Darianne is not going to lose many games. They're not going to lose many games, uh, even even strength. They're certainly not going to lose many when you give them or they go out and get a three-goal advantage. And, uh, you know, the strength all over the field, the one thing, and again, it comes up in my interview with, uh, with Roy, but uh, lacrosse, you get so many talented players that make a name as freshmen and sophomores. Now going through almost uh, a full year of, of the sports season, I recognize more lacrosse players than any other sport because a lot of these guys played two years ago. 
uh, made an impact as freshmen and sophomores. And you've got, uh, obviously, in goal for Darianne, you start with Andy Demopoulos, best goalie in the state. Uh, he looks like he's grown a foot since I saw him last, imposing. And they got strength all around, all around the field. And you got Jamison Moore at midfield. Up top, you, you've got three or four guys who, who probably will share the scoring, going from a, a freshman like, uh, like Brady Picorni, who scored four times against Ridgefield, to Matthew Minicus. And then the, the defense, is, I, I thought the defense really, really stood out against New Canaan. And uh, that four-man unit, uh, Sam Erickson and David Ivanchuk usually get the other two teams' uh, top players. But, uh, you know, they're, they're great. They're starting their tour of the best teams. They play Staples on Thursday and then... Probably the game of the year in, in any FCAC uh, sport is going to be next Saturday when uh, Brunswick comes to Darianne. Darianne's third in the country, and uh, that'll be, you know, maybe the, uh, probably the only game this year where they're going to go in as an underdog. Yeah, and that's saying something. But Brunswick, hopefully Darianne really does put up a, a good chance in that game. I think they will it, for a public school with such a phenomenal program to be matched up up against Brunswick. Those are the games that we really aren't going to see a lot of this year. Obviously, we're not going to see any out-of-state games. But that out-of-conference game, as you mentioned, next Saturday is going to be the game to watch. And Darianne, they beat Richfield this week. They beat New Canaan this week, or last week, I should say. And now, as you mentioned, the second part of that tour is they're going to play Staples, and they're going to play Brunswick. So will they pass that test? They've already gotten through the first half of it. You mentioned that Staples team, Dave. They are a team that isn't being forgotten, but is very talented, and they have proven they can hang with some of the top teams in the FCAC. They could be a potential sleeper this year outside of Darianne or Richfield, who have somewhat firmly cemented themselves as the one in the two right now where we're at in the season. Yeah, I agree with you, and uh Staples is the team I'd put an asterisk next to right now because uh, they haven't they haven't played as many games. They haven't played. They they opened with a big win over New Canaan, which uh, the way the Rams are struggling a little bit right now, it's still a quality win, but it's not like beating the New Canaan teams of of old thus far. They've got some injuries. They they've. Got a cup. I, I've heard, I don't know if it's true, they may, they may be dealing with a little bit of quarantining and such. So uh, I'm, I guess we'll find out on Thursday when we see who's on the field. But uh, they're the asterisk team right now. They, are, are they the second best team uh, behind Ridge, uh, ahead of Ridgefield? I don't know. I, it's not out of the realm of possibility. I mean, I would put them in the three slot right now until, until we see that. Rid, Ridgefield... Uh, you got Roy Colsey's getting to to coach his two sons, Ryan and Kyle. Uh, Kyle had five goals in the win over Wilton, and then Matthew Shepard, Matt Shepard in goal. I I think has been one of the early uh, surprises. Not necessarily a surprise, but may, one of the players you didn't know about yet that's really stood out. And then you have Kai Prohaska, who's just been been great for them. So. Uh, we won't talk as much Ridgefield right now. We'll let Roy Colsey do that. But I, I do think Staples is, is in the three spot right now. And then New Canaan and Wilton probably four or five right now, especially since New Canaan beat Wilton last week. So uh, we'll have to see. We can, we can talk for a minute. Uh, you're, you've, you get to see New Canaan play a lot. Uh, you know, I went from... They didn't have the chemistry that they usually did to maybe this is just a rare New Canaan team that's missing a player or two. Uh, they're not really, they're, they have a hard time diversifying their attack. And uh, I mean, they have one of the best players with one of the hardest shots in Chris Kinnett. And, uh, you know, right, you know, he's getting guarded by 10 people following him all, all over the field. And, uh, I I think not having that other goal scorer or two uh, is is putting more of a burden and, and making it uh, making opposing coaches feel more comfortable in in, in following him uh, and it's tough uh, you want you want to see him get a little bit of space and see what he can do because he's just such a dynamic player to watch but uh, how many times have you seen New Canaan and what's your impression of him? 
Well, live, I've called two games, and they've won both of them, so maybe I should call a few more. I'm joking. I'm joking. I, I saw them play against Ludlow in a game that was probably for New Canaan a little too close for comfort, but still, it was their first win of the year. And then I saw them against a much better opponent, albeit a younger team this year, in Fairfield Prep. Another game that they won and is one of their two games this year where they beat a top 10 team in the, in the poll in Prep. And, uh, and then they beat Wilton two days later, which really had you thinking, is this team starting to turn it around? Because they beat Prep, they beat Wilton, and then their third big test was Saturday up against Darianne in, in a game where you at least hope that they keep it competitive throughout the entirety of the game after an up and down first half. As you mentioned, Darianne's just playing the game at a different speed right now, and they just blew it open in the second half. I'd say I agree with you a little bit on both points. It, it's a New Canaan team that certainly has talent. Chris is Chris. We all know that. He can make shots, uh, and he'll take shots if you guys will. I think Ryan Coyone's a really great player and a guy who this year, who's committed to Bucknell, we were expecting to be a little bit more of a superstar. And he's been a great player in his own right, but he needs to step up a little bit and everyone else needs to step up a little bit to support Chris. They have guys who are really talented and have had big games this year. Nick Stiles, he had an impact in that Darian game. So did Callum Wood. And also Harry Apel. Those are three guys also committed to colleges who are really solid players who can have good games but need to play a little bit more as a unit. I think they need to play a little bit more of a two-man game and I think they need to be a little bit better uh, at the face-off and at draw control. Hayden Shin's a talented player. He's committed to Trinity but uh, he's been a little bit inconsistent this year and I think they need to step up a little bit there and I think they need uh, uh, their unit on offense to just try to congeal a little bit more because they've proven they can beat some top flight teams early but if you play like that later in the year against Richfield at home, Darian at home, Staples at home, then this is isn't going to be a team that's necessarily ready to make that deep run. I think they have the talent. I just think that, again, just like a lot of teams this year, they have really talented players who didn't play two years ago. So let's see if they show up later in the year. And Dave, I have a question for you because you now, five to six games into the season for all of these teams, you've gotten a good grasp of who the top players are. So if you had to name maybe not one, but three to four guys who would be in the running for a potential player of the year, who would you say are the top dogs, in a sense, for boys lacrosse right now and some guys who we could see in the running as a top player by the end of the year? Yeah, boy, that's uh, – and, and by the way, Chip, uh, Rams are 0-3, so uh, when I see you play. So uh, we're oh. sending in all your games, and I'll, I promise I'll stay away uh, at least till the playoffs. But, I mean, it's so hard to name four players. There are so many good ones. Uh, you know, Andy Demopoulos and, and, and Jameson Moore for, for Darianne, if I, if I can only name one or two. Uh, Kinnett is still, uh, you know, everybody, everybody is – double, triple teaming him, and he's still getting two to three goals a game, you know, what he would be doing uh, otherwise. Uh, uh, you know, Chris is in there. Ryan Colsey and, and, and uh, Kai Prohaska at, at Ridgefield are, are definitely in the mix there. Uh, Staples, I've only seen once, and, they, and they've got a bunch of, uh, of really good players. Uh, it's hard for me to, to say who, like, stands out on their team right now. I, I need to see them play. Ask me that on Thursday because I, I've only seen them once, and so I don't know them yet as well as the other teams. And I haven't seen Wilton yet at all, so uh, I'm not saying there aren't any players on, on Wilton and Staples that don't belong there. That I just need to see. I want to see them uh, another time. So the other teams I, I've seen at least a minimum of, of two times and, and in some cases three. So it makes it a little bit easier for me. But, uh, you know, one team that uh, we know is definitely <clears throat> going to be in the mix, and that's Ridgefield. Uh, you know, Roy Coles, he's got a great program every year. He's coming off, uh, he just came off a stretch of playing four of the top teams in nine days, won three of them. And uh, right now, I, I would put them as, as a solid two again with, with Staples, the Astros team. So uh, why don't we take a break here? When we come back, you'll get to hear my interview with Ridgefield coach Roy Colsey. We're back, and uh, as we were talking about 
boys lacrosse is really the season is starting to kick in a little bit and this last week in particular we got to see uh, the top powers play each other not once but several times and it's making it a, a little bit easier to at least get a read on uh, the pecking order right now and one of the teams that's definitely at the top of the pecking order is Ridgefield and joining me right now is uh, our good friend Roy Colsey from the Tigers. Roy how you doing? I'm doing great thanks for having me. Yeah, so uh, four tough games in, in nine days, and you go three and one. Uh, you can't be too unhappy about that. No, you know, to start the year, it was a little bit of a, you know, I, I, I use the word gauntlet. It was a little bit tough, especially, you know, coming into a season where, you know, you missed the previous year and you don't have, a you know, a lot of experience under your belt. So, um, you know, we've, we've been kind of learning on the fly, which which I think is true for, for all the teams in the state. We're just, uh, everybody's a step behind. And, and I think, uh, you know, I think things are starting to shake out and teams are, you know, finally starting to get, uh, you know, get get to, you know, doing what they do and, and playing the way that they want to play. And I think they're starting to develop chemistry. So I expect to see some good lacrosse uh, in the FCAC and outside the FCAC, you know, over the next few weeks. Uh, your streak uh, started with a good come from behind victory. Uh, you overcame a, de a three goal deficit against New Canaan at halftime. Uh, you took care of prep pretty easily. Had a tough game against uh, Darian, and then yesterday you come back against uh, your big rival Wilton, and, and you get a nice eleven seven win. And uh, I guess making it either, even a little bit more special is your younger guy. Now we got to talk about two of them, but uh, <laughs> you got your freshman Kyle scored five yesterday. That was his uh, his coming out party yesterday, huh? Yeah, you know he, he's um you know he he and Ryan are are. Uh you know, very different players. I think they complement each other well. I think Kyle is, you know, the same way with a lot of these freshmen. You look around the league and, and uh, you know, you've got the kid Dylan Stevens over in New Canaan, who's a very, very talented freshman who is, uh, you know, cracking the starting lineup for New Canaan. Um, you know, at Ridgefield, we've got, you know, my son Kyle, and we've got Michael Dowd, who's a freshman defender, who's the younger brother of Jack Dowd, who's off at Lafayette now. Um, so there's there's some really talented freshmen in the FCAC, and, and uh, you know, you got to be a pretty darn good player to get on the field for any of these teams in the FCAC, and then to contribute, um, you know, I think makes it extra special. I mean, that's the one thing now that we've been through about two weeks of the season that I'm noticing, uh, and, and it talks to just how, how deep the talent runs in the FCAC with boys lacrosse. It's the one sport I covered this year where I know more players than any other sport. There's there's a, there's about three or four players at least on, on almost all the top teams that you know because the kids were good enough to play as freshmen and sophomores. Yeah, you know, there's, there's, and there's also, you know, the unknown to those kids that were just about to to, to, to break in and, and have great seasons, you know, last year, whether they were freshmen or or they were sophomores last year and ready to, you know, really uh, establish themselves. And we lost that window, um, you know, of the season to see what they were going to do. So some of those kids have come out, you know, like gangbusters. You'll get a kid like, uh, you know, Minicus over at Darien, who, you know, I know is a very, very talented kid, but um, you know, freshman year, he, he didn't, you know, have a, a crazy year and he certainly would have had a tremendous season last year. He'd been out there, uh, Jeremiah Stafford, who's a very good long stick midi, same thing, you know, sophomore year was, was taken away and, and now he's out there and, you know, it looks like he should have been out there all along, you know? So he, it's nice to see these young guys, you know, getting their opportunity to be on the field and, and uh, having success. Well, what, uh, during this nine game run against, uh, some of Connecticut's best, what did, what did you learn about your team? What, what, what do you know now that you didn't know nine days ago, 10 days ago? Oh, well, you know, I mean, I, I think, um, you know, one thing I learned about them is, as far as their, their overall makeup is they're not, they're not going to quit. And, um, you know, we've, we've put ourselves in a tough position in the first half of almost every game and, and uh, you know, had to fight back from behind. And in order to do that, uh, you know, you've got to string together a series of good plays, uh, you know, offensively and defensively, and and you can't quit, you know. And, and so for me, um, the one thing that I would say at this point that I'm happiest about, you know, with that, with that stretch is knowing that uh, my guys are going to give me four quarters. They may not be four perfect quarters, uh, but they're going to play into the last whistle. And, and that's something that makes, you know, gives me confidence uh, as we make adjustments at halftime and as we, you know, go into games being down a few goals in the second half. I know my guys are going to rally. I saw the New Canaan and Darien games. Uh, one of the players who stood out to me that, yeah, I, again, uh, I've, I've seen a couple of your players, but uh, a lot of unknowns, as you said. But uh, one, one guy who stood out to me is your, your goalie, Matt Shepard. I, I thought he was really sharp in, in the games that I saw. 
You know, and, and I think that goes back to, you know, last year, uh, you know, he and an, another senior player were going to be fighting for the starting job and very likely would have gone 50-50 to start the year to see who earned that spot. Uh, but but Matthew is a very, very talented goalie. He's, um, he's a, a terrific ball stopper. He's also a great athlete. You know, he's one of these kids that no, they didn't just stick him in goal. He was an athlete that chose to be in the goal. And um, I always find that to be, a you know, a great thing. He's a competitor. He's great on the clear. He's brought the ball down over the midline a number of times. And, um, you know, he, he has really been, uh, I don't want to say a surprise. I'm not surprised, but, uh, you know, he's been a, a major factor in, uh, in getting off to a four and one start and, and, you know, having the success we've had, he's bailed us out of a few bad situations. I, I, I've seen a few good goaltenders and right, you know, right now he's, he's up there, uh, with, with you know, with somebody at the top of him after Demopolis at, uh, at Darianne. Yeah, I, I agree. Demop, Demop is another level right now. He's so big takes up the goal extremely well. He commands, you know, the, the whole defense and, and uh, he's just a real field general. I, mean, I, I really respect his game and, and uh, I think he'll do very, very well at the next level. I saw him at your place. It looked like he'd grown a foot since I've seen him last. <laughs> yeah, only, if, you're not, if you don't get to the middle of the field, there's not much goal to shoot at. <laughs> then, uh, of course, uh, you have one of the best defenders in the state. Uh, you're asking him to do a little bit more than I think you've You've wanted to, and Kai Praska uh, has really played well for you as well. You know, Kai, you know, to me is, is uh, you know, the, the top defender in the state. I, I also think he's, you know, one of the premier athletes in the state on the football field, not on the lacrosse field. And, um, you know, what I'm, what I'm, I have a, a very, very good relationship with Kai. And, and uh, you know, I, I love his game. I love his energy. I love how competitive he is. And, um, you know, what I'm trying to do is to be careful you know, how much I use them. And uh, I don't want to burn them out. You know, we need, we need them to pick up ground balls, win all the face-offs, stop, you know, the other team's best guy, and then clear the ball and create transition. And that's a, a pretty tall order for two or three different guys. You know, here I am asking him wear, to wear all those hats. And, and uh, you know, what I love about him is that, you know, he'll do, you know, anything that I ask or, or anything that he thinks is going to make our team better. And uh, it makes him a great teammate. Now, the one area, obviously, that you've struggled a little bit have been in face-offs. Uh, I know you've you've brought him in a few games. Are you going to make him your number one there? Do you, you pretty much have to put him there? You know, yeah, it depends on the score of the game. You know, how many goals are going to be scored. If you're playing a if you're playing a, a 10 to 10 game, then then you're talking about, you know, 24 face-offs. That's, that can be a big swing in possession. So if it's a high scoring game, I think we, we have to bring Kai up and, and, you know, contest some of those balls. If it's a lower scoring game, you know, Maybe it's six to six or, you know, five, five. I, I'm, I'm kind of playing that by ear. I don't want to make him our number one guy um, unless I absolutely have to. And we'll kind of see what happens. We're working like crazy at practice on, you know, we have three guys that take face us for us. And we're, you know, we're really grinding and trying to get them up, up to speed. But we haven't had much success there so far. And you have the, and, and I want to hold for a second, uh, year two guys, but uh, any of the other players that uh, have really impressed you? Any, anybody you, you didn't expect? to be as uh, contributing as much as they have so far for you? Any surprises? No, you know, I'm not surprised because they're my guys, but I would say if you if you were, you know, like you're talking about Matthew Shepard, right, guy you haven't heard, you know, too, too much about yet. Um, you know, Luke Winkler, who is a, a lefty uh, attackman and midfielder for us, he, he's, uh, he's a, a, a real tough cover. He's, he's a scrappy kid. He picks the ball up well. Um, and, and he's done an awesome job of, of fitting into the offense and playing, you know, more midfield. I think he's been... Uh, you know, I, I'm not surprised because I, I, I know the kid well. And I know he's a competitor and I know he's a great player, but it's been it's been fun to watch him, you know, come out of the out of the gates, you know, in the first five games and, and uh, really be a scoring threat and, and see all the different ways that he can help us. I put a lot on his shoulders as well. And then, um, you know, I would say Robbie Leesgang, who's, who's our junior starter coming back from a knee injury, uh, you know, in, in in his sophomore year leading up to the season, he blew his knee out. He's back and fully recovered. And, uh, you know, I thought he did a great job on Calabrese in the Wilton game. I think he held him to, uh, you know, no points in that game, which, which is a, you know, a good deal for us because Ben's a pretty good player. That was interesting. Winkler's the other one who really stood out to me in the games. I saw, I thought, uh, he, he really helps diversify your attack a little bit. Yes, exactly. <clears throat> exactly. Uh, let's get, to, um, let's get to your two guys. First of all, Ryan, uh, you know, Ryan's off to a great start, and uh, as always, he's drawn the other team's number one defender, and uh, he's played real well. 
Getting the number one guy is is a, is is a new phenomenon. When he was a freshman, I don't think he really started to to see that until the end of the year. I think that teams were, you know, hesitant to put a, a, a the top defender on a freshman, which was good for Ryan. This year, um, it's a completely different deal for him, and he's, you know, he's he's learning, you know, how, how to take on that role and 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 how to be smarter, you know, with those matchups and try to figure out what the best way to win it, whether it's dodging, whether it's, you know, taking the guy to crease, whether it's, you know, making good decisions with the ball. Um, but, he, you know, he's doing a good job. Ryan's a smart kid. I, 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 uh, I'm fortunate to have him out there. He knows what I, I want the offense to do. And the same way that I rely on Kai on the defensive end, I really rely on Ryan to kind of set the tone, especially in the quarters when they're away from my box and I can't communicate well. You know, Ryan kind of gets to be that second coach on the field, so that certainly helps. You said when we started, Ryan and Kyle are different players that complement each other. How are they different? Well, you know, Ryan, Ryan's now, you know, he didn't, he wasn't as a freshman, but now he's six foot two and, and almost 200 pounds. He's, he's a, he's a big kid. I still don't think he's learned to use his body the way that, that he is capable. And that's a focus for us is, you know, trying to, to go from being a, a smaller shifty guy to being a guy who's got this big body to use. But, um, you know, I think Ryan's IQ is off the charts. I think he's very, very unselfish, um, and and I think you know he 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 just does a great job of getting the most out of his uh, his skill. You know he's got a very nice skill set. Kyle, you know where Ryan is smooth and makes good decisions. Kyle is you know much more electric and a, and, a, and a little bit more scattered. Um, he's got phenomenal foot speed and and he's and he's super quick and and is much more of an outside shooter. I think Ryan prefers to be closer to the net. But I think you know I feel fortunate to have the opportunity to to work with the two of them. Um, and, and guide them a little bit as far as, you know, how they develop. I won't have them for long and then they'll be, they'll be off doing their thing someplace else. So, um, you know, working with Kyle has been fun and watching him develop and learn, you know, a little bit more IQ. I think he's learning that from Ryan as well, which is nice. What's it like uh, family dynamic when, when you're coaching now, not one, but just two of your guys. And they're also two of the, two of the best players on the team. And, and just within the whole dynamic there, uh, it, I, I'm sure it's both fun and I don't know if challenging the right word or yeah i mean you know what I, I tell my guys you know i mean i started with ryan when he was a freshman and I, and I had the same conversation with kyle that you know they've got to put me in a position as the coach where it's undeniable that they belong on the field and that they're going to make good decisions that they're going to be good leaders on and off the field and, and they have to do you know there's a lot of pressure on them to do everything right you know and and um and we all feel that, you know, I feel it as the coach. I feel it as the, as the father. I think, you know, both of them feel it as players, maybe having two of them on the team, maybe it's easier for Ryan and Kyle because now at least Ryan has someone else who really understands, you know, what it's like to be the coach's son. And, and, uh, you know, I'm a demanding guy. There's no doubt about it. I think my reputation, um, you know, is, is that I'm, I'm demanding, I'm tough, uh, I'm fair, but I, I hold my guys, you know, not, not my sons, my players, to a very, very high standard. And I think, uh, I think my boys at times, I hold them to an even higher standard. And, 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 and I'm not saying that that's necessarily fair, but, um, that's really the only way I know how to do it. So I, I think we're, I think we're doing well with it. I, I think there's going to be challenges. Um, you know, we're as a family right now, our, our family dynamic is great. We're having a lot of fun. I love that, you know, the three of us are always on the same schedule instead of, you know, Ryan having a schedule, Kylie having a schedule, Christopher having a schedule, myself having a schedule, and my wife, Chrissy, trying to pick up the snack. You know, life is actually easier now that at least three of us are following, you know, one game schedule. In terms of uh, the overall picture here with the league, uh, you know, I think after this week, we Darianne has established itself as the team to beat. Uh, you know, I, th I I think right now we're we're looking at you probably as uh, as the number two. We I still need a little bit more body of work out of Staples. I'm not going to rule them. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not, not. We're not looking for your vote. No, yet, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. Right. Yeah, it's it's still it's still early. But uh, and 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 again, the, uh, you know, Wilton and New Cane and uh, not to be discounted. But uh, you got a chance to go against Darianne. Uh, what's it going to take to beat them? Yeah, I mean, look, you know, we'll we'll uh, we'll play it tight to the vest in the regular season, and we'll you know we'll come out and compete, and we'll get a sense of you know what their you know individual tendencies are and where the best matchups are, and, and, and as far as you know anything that we'll do beyond that, I'm certainly not going to talk about it on a podcast. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right before the game, uh, like we uh, did. Two, you know, I was like, <laughs> 
Um, but you know, I, I think they're a great team. I, 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 I happen to agree with you. I do think they're the most talented team. Um, I think, I think they're an easy choice, you know, year after year. And, you know, we talk about it and, and my guys know, I, I think most other programs would say the same thing. You know, that the road to an FC act championship or a state championship goes through Darien. That's just a fact. And that's okay. You know, we, we accept that challenge. Uh, we know that it's, it's a big bite of the apple and, and, and sometimes it's, you know, it's hard for, you know, the local teams to, uh, to get over that hump, but you know, all of us have that expectation that we're going to be there and we're going to challenge them. So, um, you know, we'll see what happens. I expect to see them, you know, three more times. We're going to play them twice in the regular season, you know, uh, FCI playoffs and then, and then probably class L. So assuming we both make it all the way through, um, I'd like to make it more competitive than it was the first time. Around. I was going to get to, uh, I remember showing up at McMahon 2018 and you saying hi to me and you say, wait till you see what we're going to do. You're going to hate it. And, uh, you went, <laughs> you went into your, you went into the delay game and, uh, you, you shocked, uh, the Connecticut lacrosse world. Uh, do you, do you bring that tape out for, for enjoyment? And, uh, after Darian the other day, do you bring it out to start strategizing for possible later in the year? <laughs> no, no, it's in the vault. I, you know, well, I'm, I'm pretty busy. You know, looking forwards, uh, you know, it, it'll always be a great memory. And, and that group of guys, um, you know, the kids that I put, you know, that I had the, the privilege of coaching for a while. I mean, that was, a, you know, a highlight of my coaching career. But, you know, um, I, I, you just can't be satisfied with that. Right. If, if that was if, if that was the the level that I wanted to get to and, and, and I and I didn't aspire to do anything else that I got to stop coaching. And I say the same thing about competing. You know, you always got to raise the bar. So for us, it's it's getting another championship. Um, you know, and figuring out, you know, how to beat that team in, in, in a different way. You know, they might expect that to be coming, but, you know, we, we've got we've to continue to challenge ourselves. And, um, you know, Darian always, always provides us with that challenge. I think the FCI in general is, a, is a, just a phenomenal public school conference. I don't think that there are too many conferences in the United States in, in, a, in the public setting where you get so many talented lacrosse players playing against each other week in and week, week out uh, in such a, in such a small uh, geographic area. I really, I'm extremely proud of the lacrosse that we play at Ridgefield uh, and, and at, on a larger scale of the conference that we play. And I think that the FCAC is a great conference with great coaches. And, um, you know, I think we're all very, very privileged to have that opportunity. I mean, what's it say about the league that there's no interstate play this year and everybody and, and you guys in particular look forward to, to playing some of the best teams in uh, New York, Long Island, the region. Uh, you don't get interstate games. And you still with the with the top five six teams there there's always two or three big games each week. It's really a testament to the to, to boys lacrosse is the best played sport and girls lacrosse the best played sport in the FCAC. Well, you know, I think I think we, so. We picked up New Canaan as a, as a second game. We picked up Darien as a second game. We picked up Fairfield Prep, um, and we we picked up Brunswick. Right? I mean, you talk about you know adding really, really competitive teams. I mean, the fact that we can't leave the state of New York, uh, state of Connecticut to go play New York. You now I still think that our, our strength of schedule is probably, you know, as high, you know, if not higher than, than it has been the last few years. So um, I think all of us feel really lucky to be having a full season, you know, a 16 game schedule, a full playoff for the FCX and a full state tournament. And, uh, you know, I wish, you know, every single team in the state, you know, the best as far as staying out of quarantine, getting all their games in and, uh, and giving all these kids, you know, especially the, the juniors and the seniors an opportunity to, to finish out a full season this year. Yeah, so far we've been lucky. You know, it hasn't really been discussed. I covered uh, the New Canaan girls team against Darien, and they actually got stuck in quarantine right after practice, and they had to come out and play their big rival and, and actually won. But uh, I've been referring to it as the call, and I, I got that because you, you that's what you said the other day. We were talking after uh, the Darian game and just how you dread the call where you you get a phone call and you look at caller ID and it's one of your administrators and uh, you know you're you're hoping you're not going to hear that you got to shut down for two weeks. A hundred percent. I think about it. You know, every single time my phone rings, um, you know, if it's a two or three number, it, that's the first thing I think of. You know, that that, that that's going to happen and and um, you know it, it's. I think we all have to be prepared that that could potentially happen. But, you know, every game that we squeak by, every week that goes by that we're playing lacrosse, um, 
you know, it's just such a tremendous benefit for, for all of us to have to get a season in and, and to get back to some sense of, of a normal spring, which has been great so far. Well, let's hope we can uh, ride this out for another six weeks or so. Uh, I, again, you. boys lacrosse is uh, it, it's just a lot of fun. It's always exciting. And Ridgefield's always going to be in the mix. And, and you are again. And Roy, uh, it's always fun talking to you. Thanks a lot. And uh, wish you the best of luck. I'll be seeing you, I'm sure, real soon. Yeah, I'll see you soon. Appreciate all your coverage and all you're doing for our sport. And, uh, you know, take it, taking the time to, to give these kids their proper due you know, and, and, uh, and covering our sport in a way that, uh, you know, makes us all look better. So we're super appreciative here and uh, look forward to talking to you again soon. Uh, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Uh, that's Roy Colsey, and uh, we'll be back after this. So we're back, and again, I want to thank uh, Roy Colsey for the interview, the time. He's always uh, he's always a lot of fun. He's always outspoken. Uh, he's just he's just one of the the really good guys. And uh, yeah, as we talk boys lacrosse here and and, and finish off another show, uh, I guess this week not as many games between the top powers in the FCAC. But I think all eyes will be on Darien this week. First against Staples. How does Staples? How does Staples face off against them? Will they be at full strength? And uh, obviously they don't have to beat Darien, but how strong is showing? I, we'll get a little bit of a, a better read on on Staples, especially if they're at full strength or close to it. And then again Saturday, uh, uh, the, one of the games I'm most excited about. You know, Brunswick. All, all the top teams have scheduled Brunswick because we're not we don't have uh, the interstate games this year. So uh, Darien Brunswick's going to be about as good as it gets in Connecticut lacrosse, and I'm looking forward to that. Ian, as we close out here, anything uh, you want to add, boys lacrosse? Anything? What's going on uh, for your new Canaan fans this week? Uh, any any sport? Uh, I know you got you're calling a good girls lacrosse game today. Thank you. Yeah, uh, we will we'll be live streaming NCTV 78 on YouTube to give the plug. New Canaan versus uh, Wilton Girls Lacrosse, and that should be a great game. Coach Kristen Woods and her crew are 2-0, and and they beat Darianne to start their season, so they can legitimately contend for the FCAC Championship. We know that now. They beat Darianne, and that was huge. Also, we're streaming Boys Lacrosse on Thursday up against Stanford. Uh, hopefully, the boys are coming back a little bit stronger after that loss to Darianne. And then Wednesday, the day before, we're doing a baseball game, not lacrosse, but we're doing a baseball game up against Stanford, also at Mead Park. So make sure you like and subscribe to NCTV 78. And those big games I mentioned earlier in the year, boys lacrosse as they play New Canaan Darien, New Canaan Staples, and New Canaan uh, Richfield all at Dunning. You will also find those games on our channel as well when we hit May in just a few weeks. That is another episode. We have a wrap here on the Rudin Report podcast. Again, a few thank yous. I want to thank my guest, Ridgefield Boys Lacrosse Coach Roy Colsey. I want to thank my sidekick here, Ian Nicholas. You've been a great addition, so thanks for taking the ride here to Westport. Joining me again, it's great to have you. I want to thank the man in the booth, uh, the guru of sound, Travis Bell. And again, I want to thank the Westport Library as well. And the views expressed in this podcast are not necessarily the views of Verso Studios or the Westport Library. Just a reminder, you can subscribe to the Rudin Report podcast. We're on iTunes, we're on Spotify, we're everywhere. So give us, uh, give us a look, subscribe, and uh, a good review is always appreciated. Thanks a lot. Have a good week, and we'll see you again next week. Thank you.